Now, today I will be taking up a single question of how to arrive at a diagnosis. Now, this is a clinical based question from neurology and I would read the question as such. A young patient presents with acute severe headache. Acute severe headache, unconsciousness, its lateral dilated pupil and it would be suggestive of a diagnosis of acute aneurysmal hemorrhage, acute ischemia of midbrain, pontine stroke and meningitis. Now this is a representative question which was asked, a basic question, a level A question and my point here is to make you understand how to read a question, how to read the options, how to arrive at the answer. So important point is that this is a young patient. So first of all, patient's age, that's important. Acute severe, that is second, headache. So what is the presentation? The presentation is headache, which is acute and severe. These are all very important points. So you have to just focus and take each point of the question into account. Ipsilateral dilated pupil, that could be suggestive of. Now the options. So the first thing which comes to your mind can be anything from a severe infection of the brain, from a severe hemorrhage of the brain, or acute cerebrovascular accident of any sort, or a simple headache. Now, acute aneurysmal hemorrhage, acute ischemia midbrain, pontine stroke meningitis. Go through the option twice. Now, I will go through a bit of a history. You are well aware that sometimes we can be having dilatations in the vessels and the vascular dilatations are given the name as aneurysms and these aneurysms can be present in various parts of the body and one of the important parts where the aneurysms are present is the circular villus and what part of circular villus? Anterior circulation. There are the most common aneurysms which are given the name as Berry's aneurysms. B E R R Y S. Berry's aneurysms in the anterior circulation, not in the posterior circulation. Another important point. And bigger the aneurysm, the more the chances of an aneurysm to rupture. Basically, they are the clicking time bombs inside the brain. And the more they increase in size, they can rupture. And one important factor. They can also be associated with certain diseases like the polycystic kidney disease association. And what happens once these rupture? They can cause a severe sudden onset of unconsciousness or headache. And the fact is that they usually occur in young patients. There may be a genetic predisposition. And the patients usually are normal tensor. They are not hypertensive. So a classic young patient who presents with a sudden onset headache, the severe headache or the severest headache which the patient has never had in his lifetime prior. A severe onset headache, a sudden headache, especially in a young patient with loss of consciousness sometimes and ipsilateral dilated pupil because of the affection or the involvement of the third cranial nerve and with rupture and the blood going into the ventricles of the brain is classic of subarachnoid hemorrhage. I am not talking about other types of hemorrhages like the subdural hemorrhage or the epidural hemorrhage or the intracerebral hemorrhage of other sorts. So you have to remember this thing and in the subarachnoid hemorrhage you have the blood vessels which get a pathological dilatation and rupture and the classical presentation is ipsilateral dilated pupil unconscious and severe headache now the other options option d meningitis meningitis either acute or chronic that can present again with headache but the patient would have been toxic and the presentation would have been something like neck rigidity, fever, uh, gradual, uh, there would not be a sudden severe headache. Okay, so that's important. Then we would do CSF 
and the CSF would show counts depending upon acute or uh, chronic. We would have the CSF values and that would be indicative of either acute meningitis or chronic bacterial meningitis or viral meningitis of that sort. And there might be a history of tuberculosis in case of chronic uh, tubercular meningitis. So nothing of that sort given in here. Pontine stroke. Pons is a very important area. Pontine strokes, they would present with something else. They would present with hyperpyrexia and pinpoint classic pupils. So that is important. A patient would present with headache, would can present with unconsciousness, but there would be the locked in syndrome, which would give a classic pontine syndrome. The pontine vessels would be obstructed or there would be hemorrhage within the pontine vessels and the pontine strokes characteristically would present with unconsciousness, locked in syndrome, hyperpyrexia and pinpoint classic pupils. So pinpoint pupils are not seen here. So that's important. Dilated pupils. So that rules out pontine hemorrhage in any case, just from the wording of the question itself. Acute ischemia of the midbrain. Now midbrain is a vast area and midbrain lesions do not present with features like this. We have got different types of syndromes in the midbrain, uh, the uh, ventral midbrain, the dorsal midbrain and there's an entirely different type of uh, pathology and entirely different clinical presentation in case of midbrain syndromes. It is a huge topic and I will not go through midbrain syndromes in here. But classically here you have to remember that this is a case of subarachnoid hemorrhage and the question option answer is not given in a manner you would like it. So acute aneurysmal hemorrhage. So the basically it tells you the pathogenesis of this disease. So the pathogenesis behind lies the vascular disruption, the aneurysm which has ruptured and the blood would have been in the ventricles and the classic presentation of the subarachnoid hemorrhage is like this. Thanks a lot.